How mad would you be if someone shot your dog? Well, one Florida man is now suing over it. The emotional, heartbreaking drama is all playing out in a Sarasota courtroom. This is Candy. She was a Staffordshire Terrier mix. On November 18, 2016, Candy, who was unleashed at the time, was shot dead by a man named Zachary Dieterle. Candy's owner, Rodney Jacobson, rushed her to the hospital, but Candy died from her wounds. This all went down on a property owned by the father of Dieterle, the shooter, and where Candy's owner, Jacobson, kept his boat. Dieterle was not charged with a crime. He claimed Candy was in an attack position and believed his life was at risk. And the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office decided not to press charges. Well, now Jacobson says he's looking for some form of justice. And over six years later, he's had that opportunity. Today, he took the stand and talked about what happened leading up to the shooting. I remember him stopping and kicking dirt at her uh, until she retreated back under my truck. Did Mr. Dieterle continue to follow, uh, walk towards you? He, he, was got, he got increasingly closer to me as, as, it, as it developed. Is there a point where did Andy eventually come out from under the truck? Yes. Approximately how far away were you from Mr. Dieterle? Um, probably five to six feet. That's close. And then he talked about the shooting itself and its immediate aftermath. I heard uh, two gunshots and looked over at Mr. Dieterle, and he had a, um, a revolver in his hand, and he had fired two shots at Candy. You didn't, did you see him fire the first two shots? No, I did not. And why did you not see him fire the first two shots? Um, because I was going in to retrieve candy. Immediately after the first two shots were fired, what, what did candy do? She turned, uh, and ran away from Mr. Dieterle and me towards my boat. Describe to the jury what Mr. Dieterle did after candy started to run towards the boat. Um, well, he still had the gun in his hand, and he still um, was screaming obscenities at me. He called me a moron and a committee had to bring a vicious dog onto his property. And Dieterle's reaction when confronted. What did you say to Mr. Dieterle after he fired the shot? I said, uh, I was in disbelief. I said, did you just shoot my, do my dog? And he said, uh, I'm right, I did, and I'll do it again. And that the loss of his dog, he just said, is still heartbreaking to this day. Are you ever going to get over Candy's death? Um, no, I don't think so. So does he have a case? Let's ask Jesse Weber, host for the Law and Crime Network, which I found it. Jesse, good to see you. All right, Thanks so you. how good a case uh, does he have here? You know, on the outset, when you talk about a guy shooting a dog, the optics-wise, an older gentleman, you say, this seems like an open and shut case. Of course he's going to win. But when you really break it down to the law, I think the defense are doing two really strong things. One, I think they're doing a ph phenomenal job of trying to show that he was in reasonable fear for his life and he used reasonable action. I mean, clearly the dog was unleashed. This is a dog that's a tough-looking dog, had scars all over her. This is a dog also that, you know, didn't, he kept trying to get the owner's attention. This dog is barking at me. The owner didn't do anything. And he was on his property with a weapon that he had a permit to. And I think there's a strong argument that he was acting reasonably. The other thing to remember here is he's suing for intentional inflection, infliction of emotional distress. And they're trying to say, Mr. Jacobson, you've had a history of depression. You are somebody who really your life wasn't so affected by the loss of this dog. And that's a very high standard to win that kind of case. So I think they're doing an effective job But here. the owner says that Candy never attacked like this, that Candy was never aggressive at all. 
right? Right, that's true. But the other thing is this is a dog that didn't have that kind of proper training that you might see. This is a dog that was taken from the streets. And also, let's put yourself in the position of Mr. Dieterle, who we do expect to testify. He goes into a property that he owns. He doesn't know what's going on. He has a right to be there. The dog is barking. He tries to get the attention of the owner. Nothing happens there. And it's really going to be based on his testimony. And let's not forget, he wasn't charged by well, the sheriff's that's office. That's what I was going to ask you, because as you know, different standard criminal versus civil. Did the, the sheriff say anything about why they didn't charge? Yeah, so again, his property has a permit to the gun. He didn't, they felt that he used lethal force properly. But so they not, did, so they said that they thought that he used it properly, yes. not just that we didn't have enough evidence no, to prosecute? They, they looked at the case and they said that he had a legal right to protect himself because he was in fear for his life. And we should also mention something else. In Florida, there's no law on the books saying when you could use lethal force against a dangerous animal. It's kind of based on common law and case law. And clearly they're hoping this case will change it. And they felt that based on the circumstances, it was necessary for him, to, for him to use lethal force. Let me play another piece of sound. This is, uh, I think, where he's describing going to retrieve candy after candy uh, had, been, had been shot. Where was candy when she came out from under the truck? She was at the back of the truck, uh, kind of where the tailgate flopped down. It's where she had walked out to. And... Can you describe to the jury the direction she was facing in relation to the truck? Was she parallel, uh, was she parallel or, or perpendicular to the truck? She was parallel, parallel to the truck uh, from front to back. Okay. And did Mr. Dieterle walk towards uh, the back of the truck? Uh, yes. And describe where he finally stopped walking to uh, how approximately how far from candy was he he was probably uh six to eight feet so uh, this is actually before the shooting right uh, as you were pointing out not after but they're pretty close to each other i mean that's the thing yes but under cross-examination he it was not entirely clear how much he saw of the second shot he heard the shots but how much did he actually see of the interaction between Dieterle and the dog and that's going to be important right it's based on what he heard but what did he actually see there are kind of gaps in his stories and there were inconsistencies that were pressed upon when he was cross-examined as well by the by the plan of suing. Yes, yes. And I think there were points where, again, he was very confident in what he believed. I think he came off very sympathetic. And also, I should mention that when he talked about losing this dog, it was heartbreaking. But the fact that he wasn't so sure about certain things and some of his testimony was contradicted by other testimony, there were problems there for, uh, Mr., for Mr. Jacobson. The damages could be real, though. I mean, again, you know, I know people will say, you know, how much did he actually lose, et cetera. But as any dog owner knows... People, uh, you know, lose a lot when they uh, when they lose a dog. We'll be following it. Thanks, Jessica. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.